Let's talk about cortisol. Cortisol is the same thing as hydrocortisone. When it's made by your body, we call it cortisol. When it comes in a tube from the drugstore, we call it hydrocortisone. So cortisol is naturally made by your body. It's released by the adrenal cortex in response to low blood glucose levels, stress, trauma, burns, surgery, pharmacology class. One of the things that cortisol does is increase blood sugar via gluconeogenesis. Gluco as in glucose, neo as in new genesis to form from the beginning. And so gluconeogenesis is to form glucose from things like protein. You can break proteins down and turn them into glucose. You can break all sorts of things down and, and turn them into glucose. And so that's called gluconeogenesis. And cortisol helps do that. It's, it also facilitates the metabolism of, of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates so they can be broken down into sugars. Cortisol also decreases inflammation, and that's important for you to remember because we're going to use hydrocortisone and the glucocorticoids to treat inflammatory processes. So the glucocorticoids decrease inflammation by preventing the production of the eicosanoids. Remember, those are the prostaglandins. And we'll talk about interleukins as well. Those are how white blood cells communicate with each other. I think we talk about that next time. Cortisol does affect the brain. There are people out there when they take glucocorticoids, they get all crazy. I've seen it happen before. So we did some reading about that today. That was very interesting for those of you who know what amygdalas are. All right, stress will kill you and mammals who have no ability to make cortisol don't live very long. Patients who have no cortisol must have replacement therapy. Cortisol is released from the adrenal cortex entirely in response to ACTH, adrenocorticotropic as in growth. Tropic means tropics to grow hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone is one of the anterior pituitary hormones. All right, so there's somebody's brain up top. And from the pituitary comes adrenocorticotropic hormone, and that's carried through the blood to the adrenal cortex, and it stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete cortisol into the body. Okay. So cortisol is released entirely in response to adrenocorticotropic hormone. I don't need you to know this. Glucocorticoids are produced in the zona fasciculata. That's a fun word to say, so I'm sure somebody else out there wants you to know that. Glucocorticoids are produced in the adrenal cortex, the zona fasciculata. And glucocorticoid receptors are found everywhere in all the cells. The glucocorticoids have so many functions, and we're going to cover a few. So glucocorticoids and cortisol in particular, are essential for numerous homeostatic balance functions. So in times of stress like surgery, infection, dehydration, trauma, adrenocorticotropic hormone goes up, so cortisol levels will dramatically increase to meet the physiologic demands placed on the body. And so when the body's stressed out, cortisol goes up. That makes sense when the body's stressed out, the adrenal medulla makes up an effort, which has to do with short-term regulation of stress. The adrenal cortex also releases cortisol, which has to do with the long-term regulation of stress and stressors on the body. We can use glucocorticoids as drugs, and they divide them up into short, intermediate, and long-acting. Hydrocortisone, prednisone, prednisolone, methylprednisolone, these are the short to intermediate acting glucocorticoids, triamcinolone, paramethazone, fluprednisone. The long-acting ones are betamethazone and dexamethazone. So we can use glu glucocorticoids as medications. We can use very small doses of glucocorticoids to take care of adrenal insufficiency. Addison's people who don't make cortisol have Addison's disease and they have to have hydrocortisone replacement therapy. We can also use glucocorticoids to suppress all sorts of allergic, inflammatory, and autoimmune disorders. And the list just goes on and on and on and on. Maybe I'll let you guys work on that in forums, see how many things we can come up with for reasons to use glucocorticoids. Asthma, hopefully we'll be able to slip in an asthma lecture this semester. Post-transplant immunosuppression 
And then you'll notice we'll use prednisone as a cancer chemotherapeutic agent later on. However, the use of exogenous glucocorticoids can increase blood sugar levels. So sometimes we'll have somebody on prednisone and their blood sugars will run in the 200s. They won't even be diabetic. So we have to be very careful using glucocorticoids in a diabetic because they cause gluconeogenesis. They cause glucose levels to go up. So giving exogenous glucocorticoids increases blood sugar levels. Something new in the lecture at least, is something called margination. We'll try to talk about margination when we talk about the bone marrow. Margination is releasing the white blood cells right before they're ready. Your bone marrow makes white blood cells just like making little armies, armies of infection fighters. And when there's something going on in the body that your bone marrow interprets as some kind of infectious process, it will release the white blood cells a little sooner than their full maturity, and that's called margination. And so you'll see younger white blood cells. We'll call that a left shift, and we'll talk about what that means next time. Right. But people on glucocorticoids, their white blood cell count will go up, like above 10 in a normal person without an infection. One day their white count's normal, a few days of glucocorticoids, their white blood count is 10, 12, where you'd think it would be for an infection. Something important to remember about glucocorticoids is the loss of bone mass. So older ladies, people at risk for osteoporosis, we have to be very careful about using glucocorticoids in those people because of a loss of bone mass. And there are a few people out there who you give them glucocorticoids and they get completely psychotic. Right, so keep in mind that some people, they just don't tolerate glucocorticoids because there are glucocorticoid receptors in the brain that have to do with memory, emotionally charged memories. 